in. Let's get busy. Well, hello, folks. This is going to be a little short project. My uh, next door neighbor who gave me all that catawba, that great big old catawba, he kept, uh, he cut one off and kept it for himself. I think he said his, his daughter's getting married and he wanted to make a platter out of this, so he was going to coat it with epoxy. And uh, he's never done that before. You know, this is a one-time blank. I hate, hate to see him, you know, mess it up, so I volunteered to mess it up for him. But, uh, so we're going to put tabletop epoxy on this. But first, you know, you just got to have a couple, couple things about it. You know, your finish is, is only as good as your start. In other words, if you put a, a fine finish over something that is not level, had holes in and stuff, you, you won't do that. First thing you want to do is check to see how flat it is because you don't want any, uh, you know, divots in it. Man, that's amazing. That is flat, flat, flat. Let's check it in a couple more directions here. Well, my goodness. That surprises me. It really does. Uh, he's got a dippity do right there, but it's not very much. And a little one right, right here in the center, I'd say it's probably a sixteenth at the most. So uh, that's not going to be an issue then. I thought I was going to have to like glue a glue block on the back side and flatten it out for him, but I'm not going to. Don't need to. Uh, I'm going to fix that hole in it. So right the first there. thing I'm going to do is, you know, you got a couple of places here. You got this right there. It's got a crack right there, and that one's got a crack right there. And the epoxy's going to get in there. But uh, I'm going to fix them this way first anyway. This one, I don't know how deep it goes. I don't. Let me look at the back side real quick here. Yeah, it goes almost, it goes all the way through, see, so that'd be a place for all the epoxy to leak out. So it definitely got to be fixed. So let's put a little bit of uh, CA in the hole first. Last time I, I did this, I flipped that off of there, and a big drop hand ended up, and it ended up on my glove right there, and it burned a big blister. Soaked through and burned a big blister before I could get the dang glove off. So. This stuff will burn you, my friends. I'm just going to stuff some in there like that. Like so. And add a little more CA to it. Make sure you it's all soaked, you know. And that ought to get it. All right, now, I'm going to use some different one on one of those two cracks because this is too, this is too coarse. I got a big wall of different shavings over there. Uh, collecting, I collect them in bags and I got them on the wall there so I can pick up one. But I started that when I first started turning and I thought it really made a difference, you know, to get the exact same stuff in, but it doesn't. It does not, my friends, it does not. All right, that's all you need there. If I was going to turn this, I would have to come in here and put some CA on around the bark. But I, I'm not going to turn it, so I'm not going to have to. All right, so that ought to get that. You know, I just wanted places where it wouldn't be running out, you know. So I'm going to let that sit a minute. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my palm sander, put 80 grit on it, and gear H-E double L. <laughs> Randy, shut up. What's the matter with you? He wants me to throw the ball, see? Spoiled the dang dog. That's what he is. My wife's fault. She's the one who come out here throwing balls for him all the time. And I try, I try to ignore him.
All right, I'm in here in my office now. I got cardboard on the floor. I'm going to put a little bit more newspaper over here. But the main thing I wanted to say is that this has to be as level as possible in both directions. And you just do that by shimming it up. I use like paint sticks and stuff, uh, you know, until I get it pretty level. Of course, when you're dealing, when you're dealing with something that the back isn't, as, you know, the same as the front, you know, it might be a one edge a little thicker than the other or something. It's, it's a little more difficult. But I got it close. I'm just maybe a, just a little off right there. But this way I'm perfect. And I don't think I'm going to get it much better than that. I'm going to try one more little thing here. And you have to be careful because you, you know, this one may upset that one. So I'm going to put just a little bit. Maybe I'm getting a little too picky. I don't know. Well, it doesn't look like it changed it done. Did I knock the other one out or something? No? Where are we now? Well, let me try another one. I'm using just little slivers of cardboard. Well, it still ain't there. How I come? No. Oh. Heck, I'm too high now. Way. Sorry guys. Sometimes I wonder about me. Hey, perfect. Alright, I'm going to be using Total Boat Tabletop Epoxy. And all I need is the epoxy, a spreader, and a heat source like a propane torch or an air gun. I prefer the torch because the air gun, you know, it Intakes air and blows out air, and in that sometimes you get a little dust with it. So I prefer to use a torch. So <clears throat> let me go pour it up and mix it up. And gloves, gloves got to have gloves. So we'll go from there. Okay, I've just about got it mixed up. There it is, and probably way too much. But <clears throat> I'll put a little color to rest and put it in my pin blank so it ain't no big deal. I don't waste it. They say to turn it, I mean turn it. <laughs> Start real slow so you don't get no bubbles in it, but I found that almost impossible to do. And you notice it's really like thick. So that you know that lets it spread out pretty good. I believe that's got it. I've already moved it from cup to cup. That's what you what you what you're supposed to do. All right, let me go put this tick somewhere before it gets in the way. I gotta do something else too. All right, I did forget one thing. You're gonna need a brush because you want to work it into the bark all the way around when it runs over. So let's do it. Let's just do it. Just do it. It don't get done by itself, does it? Pour it in the middle. Ooh, Betsy. And take your spreader and move it from the middle out to the edges. Okay. Adequate amount of this stuff. I'll knock it over, which is probably what I'll do. You want to go near the edge first, but not over. Alright, I'm going to have to pull some more. Looks like maybe I didn't get too much after all. Just go ahead and go over the edge. Just pretend the edge isn't there. And let her go. It's right here where I can. Let 
This will definitely secure the bark. Uh -oh. Pour a little more in the middle of it here. Like I said, this has some pretty good dippity doos in it. And I'm gonna let it find its own level. It will. Okay. Uh, wish I had a little better light in here, but you know you got what you got. Now, if you got a smooth edge, you, you know, it, it'll just cover it, and all you have to do is brush it out. You can see I definitely do not have a smooth edge. In fact, I may have to get some of that out of the center here in a minute. I can't really see what I'm doing over here. There you go. That's an easier way to do it. You know what, I just happened to get lucky with this and got, looks like I just, just the right amount. Can't really see if I got it all or not. I'm gonna get a light. I'm in my office and I can't really see as well as I wish I could. What do I do with my brush? That wasn't, that was stupid. I don't care how hard you try, you end up getting epoxy on something. Alright, you just take a propane torch now. What you can do is just sort of like go over. You can see it when you go over. You don't want to do it too much. Let's look at it at an angle. I think that looks good. We'll come back in a little while. And you can probably do that for about 20 minutes. So you got to come back and check it once in a while, for a while anyway. Make sure you don't have any bubbles pop up. Looks like I see a couple right here. There's a little bitty couple right there. Sometimes they'll gas off by themselves, and sometimes they won't. There we go. All we gotta do is brush it over now. You don't need to get very excited about it. That's good. I don't see more. Sometimes that's a bit hard to see, especially when you got the real good light like I got. Imagine you just come around and just take like a paint stick or something. It's probably going to do it some more, but I always just sand these off afterwards. Some people wait until it gets just right, then they try to cut them off. But what I found was nine out of ten times I screw up when I try to cut them off. And, uh, 
make a bigger mess than what I wanted. That's about all I do right there because I'll be sanding the other side a little bit. Not a whole lot. I want to show you this right here real quick. I'm not going to hold it over. I hope you can see it all right. It's called xylene. It's for thinning and cleaning up epoxy. It works real well. All right, there you have it. We'll check back in tomorrow. See you later. All right, there it is. It looks real good, except I, I went in and I thought it was done. And I do have it. Wherever they went, I mean, they're really small. A couple of little bitty bubbles right in that area. And right there, a damn bubble. There's that bubble. Right there, a damn bubble in there. I got him off, but he left his prints. So what I'm going to do now, there are different ways to do this. Uh, a lot of people just trim it off whenever they, uh, you know, whenever they're doing it. When they're pouring it, they wait till it gets tacky and then they trim off a razor blade. I, I don't have that kind of patience. So what I'll do is I'm just going to take this little die grinder, come around here, clean up the bark a little bit. That's the only place it is. It won't take very long. Well, that's it, guys. I think overall, it's, it, look, it's pretty nice. It's got that heart shape, I'm sure. I think he said it's his daughter's getting married. I'm really not sure. But whoever it is, they will enjoy it. Very unique, very different. That's how big that uh, Catawba wood is right there. I have never, I haven't measured this. Let me see what we got going here. And uh, we've got 23 and a half inches. That's a pretty good sized piece of wood, guys. Well, anyway, that's it. Thanks for watching. And, uh, you know, subscribe. Give me a like. Tell your friends. Call your mama. Here's my next project right here. Yeah. This is a piece of pecan. A friend of mine gave me. I'm going to make a big old goblet out of it, in grain wise. It'll be my next project. See you later. The wood burner has left the building.